Hello. Hello and welcome to the Orchid Saga. My name is Ilkion Wiersma and I hope this video will find you well, like uh, my other videos, I hope. Um, so yeah, I recently uh, posted uh, a few videos on new orchids, uh, as you uh, perhaps saw. And uh, Mary G. Orchids, thank you so much for uh, suggesting to make some videos about the repotting uh, processes that I need to do, uh, or to go through. Um, I'm not going to uh, video all of them, I think that's a little bit too much. So I thought, let, well, let's think what would be uh, very interesting to film. And uh, there are three that popped out. Uh, first of all, the Miltoniopsis, I think, are very nice to follow on, uh, basically from start to uh, not finish, but uh, you know what I mean. And obviously the, the beautiful Miltonia, very rare one. And uh, yeah, you probably saw the blooms already a little bit, but uh, I thought also the Ancilia Africanas because those are very huge plants. And uh, yeah, I think it's very nice to do something a bit different. So I grabbed this uh, very big beauty. Let's have a uh, little close up quickly about the, uh, at the blooms. But yeah, as you probably remember, it's a very, very long, tall plant. And it has a beautiful root system. So yeah, it really needs to be repotted. And my nose is itchy, sorry. Uh, it has a beautiful new growth. So yeah, I thought I'm going to take this out of pot uh, with you guys. Uh, I have another one. I will do that uh, off uh, camera because of a little bit of uh, the time uh, that I always spend on repotting and it takes up a little bit too much, I think. But yeah, let's uh, follow on uh, this one. And I need to come up with this system because this one is very top heavy. It's both of them, they completely fall over all the time. So yeah, but that's, uh, first of all, let's start to getting it out of the pot. So as you can see, I now have it uh, laying on my uh, uh, potting table. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, already a challenge because look at the roots coming out of the bottom of the pot. And they are beautiful. Well, this one is papery. <laughs> uh, yeah, a few are okay. Yeah. And a few are um, not here with us anymore, so I can trim them off. But I'm not sure which one, uh, which those are. So let's start with trimming them off and see how much we have left before I uh, try to pull them back through those holes or maybe I I will uh, need to cut a pot something like that you never know this one's broken yeah it's very inconvenient so yeah it definitely um, breaks roots obviously because it's so unruly <laughs> Um, those holes are not that big. Those roots are. So yeah, but if I try to cut uh, the pot, I need to get something in there, some some scissor, scissors uh, of some sort, and that's not the easiest because here I have new root tips, and the chances that I will break them is very very. Uh, hi. So I perhaps need to uh, need to cut those uh, roots off because it has so many roots, and I don't want to damage these guys over here. These are all the ones. This this these guys over here are pretty new, I think. Plus that one. So that's almost a complete root system as well. So yeah, I'm going to cut a few off. That's my decision. It's hard. But um, yeah, it's better, I think. So I'm going to try to cut off as many old ones that I think are all the roots are a bit discolored. This one looks like it's new. It's, uh, it has a branch here, but it's papery. So yeah, that one could go anyhow. So that leaves me with a few less, some broken roots, That one is broken off. So I think this is the best approach. This one is very large. But papery and broken there. So I'm going to take it off. And I think I can be uh, 
a little less careful because of the, all the new roots coming out there already. Okay, so let's have the first try to get it out of the pot. I'm right-handed, so I need to switch it. In this case, it's a little bit easier. Oh yeah, it's really, really in need of a root uh, repot, a root pot, a root pot, uh, repot. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Just one more look. Look at the beauties there. So yeah, I need to do it now before they start growing and getting too long. But anyhow, it's very hard to get them out. Out of the pot. Maybe because of those roots still underneath there. Yeah, we still have some paper roots. So here again, and this is why I do film one because this is taking it's quite a process as you can imagine I think so I'm only uh, going to do one Whoops there we go So let's try again I'm squeezing the pot try to make them uh, loosen it, it up a little bit at root bulb and I think it's working. There is something moving, but there are some roots still there. Come on, you guys, go through the holes. Back in, no, this one. Ah, yeah, it's coming from one hole going into another one. So yeah, <laughs> mm, I'm gonna cut it there. Perhaps that was the right place to cut it. And then, whoops, there we go, yeah. You see? But luckily enough, we have quite a few roots left. Quite a few. So, yeah, there are a lot of roots. Dry, it's very dry, this one. But anyhow, I'm going to water it later on. And let's settle in. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's old media. And I cannot go through this, come through this with this. I, this is a very road bound market, you guys. Very hard to repot these guys because of this one solid solid mess there so i will cut in make a few cuts to get uh, come through i need to do this i don't like it but i need to do this because i need to get that old media out and once again i have a beautiful root system coming already so i should be pretty safe to do this and from now on it will be grown into inorganic media so if i ever have this happen again such a big root system i can just leave the media there i don't have to mess around and that's such a big, big plush when you grow them inorganically, if you ask me. So I'm just going to make some cuts, like I said. I need them. the other. Here it is. A bit stronger um, clapping materials. Clipping materials, I'm sorry. Clapping. <laughs> so just making three cuts there. Now I'm going to slowly try to pull it out. To break it uh, up and it's a bit inconvenient as well because the arc itself is so large <laughs> not complaining but it is what it is yeah i need to cut in more so i'm going to be fairly rough on this one i apologize if you uh, cannot take it but it needs to be happened for the arc's sake at the end I'm going to uh, it's not much media left there but it's enough maybe I'm going to take it under the tap and see how that works so let's uh, get over uh, to uh, that side there's my uh, tap and uh, let's try to sp uh, yeah clean it off and hopefully that helps So as you can see, we are at the sink now. So I tried to uh, uh, clean the roots with uh, with the tap, 
um, and see if that works. But I come to think of it, I firstly grab a little bit of our our water. I have it next to me here. So because the roots are very dry, if they want to take up some water, it's not directly tap water because of the high uh, parts per million, etc. So just wetting the roots a little bit, like I said, so they uh, absorb the better quality water first. And I think they do. So let's see if that, uh, that was helpful or not. Probably gonna make some no noise. I must apologize for that. At least I see some media already uh, spraying off. I hope you can see it on the camera as well. It's sometimes a little bit hard to get everything in frame. Oops. And this arc is so big, it's a little bit un unruly <laughs> in some, some, uh, some way. Yeah, we can start here. I have nice roots. This water is a little bit warm. Not too warm yet, but a little bit too. Almost getting there. Yeah, this is better. Let's try again. Actually, I may speed up this process a little bit. It's going to take a while. It's okay for me, but obviously you don't want to be here all day. So uh, I will continue and I will uh, see you later. table um, so yeah now once again you see why I'm only filming one because this is uh, taking a while it's okay but uh, yeah you don't want to wait for it where is um, ah, there's my clipping I always keep, forget the proper name for this uh, clipping thing <laughs> but um, so let's what I uh, was thinking was that um, let me show it to you this cane needs to come off anyhow and it's way at the back it's almost off so there are all the roots there that probably even will not survive in cell watching because they are not used to that so I'm I want to take off more roots just in case um, and that leaves me with a uh, a better ap approach or better uh, way to get uh, to the media as well so those back roots here one is was already broken off i'm going to cut in just uh don't think about it too much <laughs> don't like doing this but like i said these will die off anyhow in self-watering or at least most of them so i'm going to make some room and we will uh have updates on this arcad of course and then probably then we will have a better settled root system i've done this before I actually done this on a zygopetalum that video is on my uh, channel of course and i uh, that one is still was in beautiful had a beautiful spike so it's completely fine but still it's not not beautiful uh, <laughs> to do on the other hand maybe it's good that i filmed this so you can see that sometimes uh, it's maybe a little bit rough here and there, but the plants can take it. Uh, but you need to know what you're doing, thinking uh, I think, and it needs to be uh, for a very good reason. And in this case it is, because otherwise, if I leave this media on here, first of all, we saw there were some creatures living in there, so I need to clean it up. Plus, this starts, uh, this was older media anyhow. And that in self-watering, always in water, you know, that's asking for problems. And then all these new roots will die off as well. So it prob probably be better to uh, lose now a few roots than the whole root system in the end. But oh yeah, yeah, this one has been grown on very well. It's beautiful. But yeah, if you want to transition it in another type of media, it's a little bit of a, a problem sometimes because you're going to lose 
the older roots. Probably. Not always, but in uh, many cases you will. Or they need to shoot out again to start to the branch. Then, in those cases, especially on family options, I, uh, I now can uh, keep the old roots. And those old parts may, uh, development may uh, die off and rot off, but the uh, new parts of roots will be uh, working fine and growing fine as well. So in that case, you sort of kind of have the old roots adapted. And in a very rare case, uh, the old roots do not die off and keep uh, nice intact, but that doesn't happen that often. And that's... Uh, Obviously, uh, to be expected. There we go again. Oh, a lot of roots off there. I need to loosen this up anyhow to get some air in. It's massive. It's a really massive uh, root system. And luckily, I have my gloves on. What are you doing there? There was. Kind of worm, I think, some type. No, it's not really a worm. I don't know the proper name again, but so yeah, there are some visitors here. <laughs> so yeah, again, probably uh, some bush snails could be in here. Otherwise, on the other hand, I have quite some uh, growing tips, but you never know. I like to uh, clean the roots off as well, and therefore I need to really be in there once again. So I. Trying to make up, no, I'm not really making up excuses, but, <laughs> but it is, yeah, we don't like doing this, of course, that's the reason. I will uh, clean it again on the tap and I will be uh, right back, because otherwise, uh, like I said, it will take up a way too long time, <laughs> too much time. So I think now I did uh, get off as much, or at least enough media. There's still a little bit here and there, but it's looking way better. So what I now do is, uh, grab my uh, bottle with uh, hydrogen peroxide and uh, try to spray it as much as I can around those new roots and just to be sure because I uh, did see uh, quite some uh, little <laughs> animals inside of the pot so yeah and it's also uh, for uh, maybe some rot that might set in on the roots now because I uh, damaged them quite a bit I uh, like to put in some, uh, put on some hydrogen peroxide as well to uh, kill off the bacteria. It also does kill off the good bacteria. So, but I have uh, some stuff that I uh, like to use or to give to my uh, orchids, and that's the um, that are good bacteria. So it will have some uh, new good bacteria in the, in the reservoir, and when it starts to grow, it will create its own little environment in there eventually. But uh, yeah, let me uh, get in this all the root section section as good as I can. So I try to leave on the a bit more older roots that are currently are uh, branching so because those can adapt. Let me hear. Yeah, this is sitting sitting quite a bit, but I see quite some uh, new root tips still there. But you can see I did manage to get off quite some uh, roots as well, and it needed to be done. And I apologize, I keep saying it because it's just, it's just not nice to do. So I really, really have to uh, do it and talk to myself. And every time I do it, I uh, say this to myself, it will be all fine, you need to do it. I know, I do this for years and still it's the, the, one of the least favorite things to do. But in a few months probably, we'll, we'll ha have a visit again. And it probably has a beautiful new root system and it's happy and it's adjusting and it's doing well. So while this is um, doing its job, the hydrogen peroxide, I will uh, take off my gloves and we will uh, come up with a new potting uh, setup. And um, well, yeah, I will uh, show you the potting, um, new potting setup. And obviously I will take the other one out of the pot as well. I will not film that because this is uh, already getting uh, way too long, I think. So this is what I uh, came up with. I'm not completely sure if it will work because the plants are very large and in comparison they have a very small root system, so they are very top heavy. But I have uh, my uh, knitting needle, I think you pronounce it, uh, the cheap ones. 
these are coated so they are not getting getting rusty uh, because I will grow these uh, obviously uh, self watered as well so let me uh, get the basket but I will have some reservoir down there an open basket so we will have quite some moisture um, around the roots but also quite some air at least that's the plan my water meter that is this one that will give a uh, indication of there is still water in the reservoir or not my uh, like i said knitting needle that will uh, uh, be stabilized in this in the middle of the pot and i can use it as a stake for those big canes at least that's the plan this net pot is going inside uh, the outer pot quite a bit hopefully that helps with stabilization as well and also uh, keep it um, very humid there because it's they, these guys will uh, did get quite some light and if they really start growing I think they will uh, they will be great uh, big drinkers as well I'm not sure it's just a feeling so we will see if that is true so I came up with two pots I only did have this very large uh, this was my last one uh, at the moment water meter so I came up with this one um, I could see this one uh, as well but this one would be a little bit better because once it stands on his uh on the shelving i'm not sure if i can see it enough but i think it will do so um, i'm going to unpot the other one and then i will be back with the first one and we will repot it into uh, this new system so i am not a big fan of voiceovers i apologize but i did forget to turn on my mics so i have to put in a little piece of uh, for, uh, voice over here but um, yeah, the cane already uh, did fell off and you can see there's a little bit of a lighter spot there. But basically it was uh, rotting off uh, anyhow as well. So I just kept it, uh, up, uh, yeah, I could uh, take it off very easily. So um, this is the setup that I like to use. You see there a uh, outer pot and um, I have my water meter in there while I'm talking about the roots. <laughs> Um, I think I'm checking the uh, breaking point, but there's barely anyone, uh, uh, any breaking point there visible. But yeah, the water meter, and uh, I use a knitting needle to, uh, for staking it. And I have these long strings of Cintiq that I use as a wicking material. It's very uh, wicking, and it can hold very a lot of uh, a, a lot of water. And these are about one meter long, and I, uh, when I use it in a pot, the shorter ones are uh, 10 centimeters. And I also use the big pumice that I'm showing you here. So I will have quite some uh, uh, yeah, humid humidity there, plus quite some air. And this is uh, what I'm now showing is just some leftovers, I uh, call it. Uh, inorganic so I can reuse it which is very ha handy of course. So I put it in, uh, in the bottom of the pot and then I will uh, zigzag uh, the Cintiq and then I will grab some pumice and that's how I uh, start putting up um, the argot and try to get it as evenly moist uh, throughout the pot. And I'm using this net pot and I have, I don't know if you could see it, but there's a cable tie to it. I make a loop with those cable ties so it's very easy for me to get it out. So. Uh, apparently the gloves were annoying me, that happens more often, <laughs> I just cannot stand them at a certain point. So yeah, now I uh, show you one more time the beautiful pumice. I, I am such a fan of the pumice, I apologize, but it is uh, such a beautiful media to work with. So uh, from this point on I am trying to see how much pumice I need to do in the pot before I can actually uh, put up the orchid itself. So now we grab the orchid and we'll see how much uh, it will go in the pot. If I didn't have too much pumice in there, which happens sometimes, but I think it will be all right. But this one has quite a root system, so I need to uh, gently uh, put it in uh, that net pot. And I try to avoid breaking the roots as much as I can, obviously. But this is uh, once again the best uh, uh, time to repot it. It's just started such a beautiful new root system. So if I do break any roots, it's not the end of the world. And once again, I grab that uh, Cintiq. Like I said, I'm zigzagging it around the roots. And that is uh, for the aeration. I did uh, put up the camera a little bit closer so you can see now that I'm nicely on the edge of the pot. Maybe a little bit above it, but that's okay. 
I like to use a, a top layer with pebbles, which you will see in uh, in a minute, or actually at the end of the uh, potting. But um, I like to have the orchids above the pot as well, so they uh, dry off when I have my fans running, and uh, that's a little bit more easier uh, to manage. And of course, it always depends on your own environment and your own situation. So there goes the last pieces of the Cintiq. You can see they reached the uh, upper uh, section of the pot as well. And that's uh, what I wanted. So therefore I zigzag it and I left a little piece over and I'm basically layering it uh, throughout the pot. So I will, um, well the Cintiq will um, absor absorb the uh, moisture from the reservoir and will pull it upwards. And that's obviously what we want for the newer roots. So they have a nice, human a uh, human environment to uh, grow in and to get hold of most of the orchids really like the uh, Cintiq but in the beginning I used it a little bit too much and then it's very very wet in your pot and it is even for sale watering it sounds a little bit strange but it's too wet as well we need that air and we don't uh, we want it humid uh, basically uh, a lot of humidity in there and uh, not wet obviously once again, the more you experience with this and the more you see how your arcs react and the more you know what to do. But basically what I'm trying to say is uh, try to understand your media. What, what can you expect of the media that you are using? Try to uh, get uh, the benefits of the, the pros, obviously. And so I am, for me, a pro is uh, a lot of humidity in the pot, water, air, so therefore I use Cintiq for the water and the pumice as well for a little bit water, but uh, more for the air. And of course, inorganic. I always love inorganic the most when I need to up pot them. I can just basically take them out of the pot, have a look, maybe some older roots. If not, I just put it up in a new pot and in a bigger pot and that's it. And here I start uh, Putting in the pebbles I talked earlier about, I found these beautiful grey ones, they uh, turn up uh, almost black when they are wet and when they are dry they uh, have this beautiful greyish color and I think it uh, goes very well uh, with the pots that I, uh, that I use. But this is basically the essential uh, of, the <laughs> of the, this part of the video, that's what I'm explaining in, uh, in the voiceover. But, um, yeah, I think this is it for now, and we uh, we will have a last look at them in uh, inside the greenhouse. So yeah, I think that uh, previous part of my uploading this one here, uh, I, I needed to have to put in a, um, a voiceover. I think because I saw that I didn't turn on my mic. I apologize for that. But uh, I think I came up with a good solution. <laughs> I'm not sure at this moment because I'm still filming, of course, and not editing yet. Anyhow, here they are, you guys. And I th I'm happy with the, uh, with the setup. I think it looks very pretty. A beautiful large orchids. And they are kind of symmetrical. So I uh, really, really like the, like I said, the setup. Um, this one currently has not much going on in the, uh, new roots and growing roots so it probably will be be set back a little bit more but it had some sphagnum moss in there still so yeah some older roots a lot of roots as well so yeah these guys uh, really need to acclimate and now just uh, i'm going to leave them uh, alone as much as i can because they are really stressed now of course i've been so brutal on on the roots etc but Look, it looks beautiful in the end. We have beautiful new roots coming there. These should be fine and taking all over the place very beautifully. The other one, like I said, doesn't have that going on currently. So yeah, but I've do, done this before, but it may take a little bit more time for this orchid. So if you're new to this, don't do it. Always wait for a new growth with new roots. That's the best. But I uh, now had everything set up. So I wanted to have a... 
this over and done. So that's why I, uh, and I, I, I'm a bit more experienced with this transition because I do it uh, for years now and always. So I, uh, I'm sure it will be fine. But uh, like I said, if you don't, um, if you're new or you're not sure if you want to do this, please wait for new growth is always the best uh, solution, of course. So I'm keeping them here now. They will be uh, placed up here, but you can probably see it's way more lighter there. My camera is now adjusting it, but they uh, will receive quite some light. But because these are, are stressed now, this just recently moved in my greenhouse. I uh, did repot them in a, within a few days. So there's a lot of things that happened with them. And uh, so now they, like I said, they basically need some rest. I only will water them uh, like you would do in uh, regular media with RO water and some seaweed. I'm nothing adding. I'm adding nothing in there. Uh, I'm adjusting the pH, of course, uh, around to uh, six, six point five. Uh, but most of the times, the seaweed uh, lowers the pH uh, naturally uh, as well. But anyhow, then I flush a little bit of water, the seaweed water, through the pots and until I see new roots or after a day or four or five, if I'm sure these roots are growing into the pot, then I will fill up the reservoir because then they will grow inside the pot as well and they need to be adjusted into, into the new system. So then they need water, but this one I will wait until I see really near, nice roots sprouting and then uh, it will be fine. I have, uh, I was a little bit, sidetracked here because I have a uh, let me quickly show it to you guys Francis Fox here didn't have a new growth I did repot it anyhow and you can see it responded uh, perfectly because this time of year they um, this is the really their favorite parts of course because they like the light the warmth so in that case I don't have any troubles but if I would do this in fall and winter definitely wait for new growths if you really have to repot of course probably you will uh, prefer the, the fall but any well actually that's not completely true as long as it grows new roots that's the that's the most important part if you uh, uh, repot them in in winter or, or um, fall yes <laughs> the colder season basically well Mary G Arkets and the rest of you guys I really hope you enjoyed this video so yeah this was basically the most challenging uh, repot maybe i ever done uh, of one I, I did two of very large orchids as well in very big pots but this one yes just to start uh, off with uh, fresh media those other orchids were already uh, adapted so that makes it a little bit easier but these guys yeah some challenging so yeah it took me it took me quite a long i hope this video uh, came out uh, very well and you enjoyed it please let me know and of course if you have any questions or suggestions please leave them in the comment section as well and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up so I hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye-bye.